Hey everyone and welcome to lesson four of the spring marketing your mini sessions for family photographers. It's a free group we have going. DM me if you're interested in joining. It's never too late. Uh, I am at Sweet Bright Being on Instagram or you can find me stacypotterphotography.com online. Okay, but the best place to DM me is Instagram. That's where I'll get back to you the fastest. Okay, because Instagram is my platform now. So 15 years ago when I was first starting out, I definitely relied on Facebook. If you haven't listened to Lesson 3 yet on Facebook, please go back and listen to it. So when I moved to Maine for two years in the middle of my career and then moved back to Boulder, I relied on Facebook during those times too because it's all about like deep personal relationships. And I had no problem asking friends and, and family that, are, that were close to post pictures that I've taken of their children and rave about me and say how much they love the photography because I knew that would really start getting my business up and going again after having moved away, and it did. So uh, Instagram doesn't work as well for that because people don't really read captions. You can't link to things inside your post. So don't forget in Instagram, do not be linking inside your post. You have to put the link in your profile caption. And then at the bottom of your post, say, see link in profile. And you can change that link back when your promotion is over. So um, I see that mistake happening a lot. But we're going to go over a lot of the specifics. Okay. I'm going to throw in as many tips as I can, though, for you because I've got a lot of great ones. Take some notes. Okay, before we get really started, I want to talk about some few, few core concepts. First one is FOMO. If you don't know what that is, it is fear of missing out. And we really want to rely heavily on this in our week of advertising on Instagram because it really works. It just really works, right? Everybody, nobody wants to miss out on the great, on the great thing. And this is a great deal. So what I'm teaching doesn't work if you always have many sessions because there's nothing special about that, right? But if you only hold many sessions you know, a couple times or a few times a year, then you can really highlight that fact in your marketing, like in your content. Tell your audience, you know, this is really special. I only do this <laughs> twice a year, like, and then it's gone. Or, you know, say you have limited spots and, you know, start crossing things out. So um, another amazing way to do it for many sessions is when you finally do open your bookings on that day, what you want to say to your audience is please send me your top three times and dates that you would want ideally for your family. And all week they've been watching your stories or whatever it is and how beautiful golden hour is and how magical it is when the light is low and directional and, and it just lights everything from within or from behind or whatever you, however you want to say it in your dreamy marketing way, if that's your language, right? It is for me. Your, your marketing language might not be dreamy. But anyway, you'll have shared all week or at some point about this perfect time. And so they'll not want to miss out on that, right? You're creating FOMO by saying to send me your top three times. So they'll want to do that as quick as possible because they'll want to get a good time. So you, you will book so many sessions on that very first day because of FOMO, because everybody wants to get in to get the best time. Because once they email you with their top three choices, that's like as good as booked, right? There's not a lot left you have to do after that to to hook them in, except, you know, except for, you know, still re respond to them and develop a personal relationship still because you want to have them be re repeat clients. But just from that little bit of FOMO, you can book a lot of clients. <coughs> okay. So um, make sure you're using you language. I've talked a lot about warming up your audience with getting to know you, getting to know your family, getting to know your photography journey. And of course, during those times, you're going to be using I language, but in your marketing, you want to use you, you language because you really want to bring it alive for people. You want them to be dreaming about this. So when you're talking about locations and you're doing like a story on locations or clothing, you want them to be envisioning their children there. And, and you want them to start like dreaming up what their children are going to be wearing and what their photos are going to be looking like and what types of products or, or gallery walls they're going to create with these photos. So you want to really get them dreaming. And part of that is with you language. 
Okay, and then um, along with everything that I always say is that you want to make them feel special. So whoever's commenting on your photos, you know, make sure if it's your ideal client, make sure that you're clicking on their profile and seeing who they are and commenting back on one of their photos. And um, if somebody DMs you with information, don't just send them back. Like if someone says, hey, what's your price for a mini session? And that's all they say. Don't just write back. This is the price. Do you want a book? <laughs> Instead, you don't even talk about price, really. You'll say to them, um, well, first you'll look at their profile if it's public. And if you see pictures of their kids, then you'll say something personal to them. Like, oh my gosh, your kids are so adorable. I would, you know, six months is my favorite age to photograph. You get all those sweet, squishy, happy photos and all the expressions or, you know, whatever. You make it really personal to them. And then you say, you know, whatever your spiel is. Like I say, so she with me is fun and laid back. We don't get all posy posy. We just walk around. I'll ask you to do certain things and I'll get you connecting with your kids and then I'll snap away. And then I ask for their email and I'll and say, you know, um, the mini sessions are 200 and I'd love to send you, you know, my investment guide so you can take a look at that. But don't go too deep into the deal, you know, um, and you don't even need to talk about price in this initial conversation because you can get their email and send it to them. And you always want to collect emails because I'm going to explain this in, a, in the next lesson, but uh, email marketing is incredible. It's freaking incredible. I can't wait to tell you about it in lesson five. Okay, so anybody that DMs you, don't ignore them. Um, I often, I have so many followers, I often lose people in my DMs, and I think about them a month later, and I'm like, shoot, I can't find them. And I'm like, that was my ideal client. So it happens. Don't kick yourself. Nobody's perfect. These are just general guidelines to, you know, make your portrait photography business as successful as it can be. All right, so the number one mistake photographers make on Instagram is thinking that other photographers are your audience. So I've seen all these comment pods where photographers kind of loop around and they're all commenting on each other's photos. Um, and I see people striving really hard with their hashtags to only make it into some of those feature sites. If you don't know what a feature site is, it's a site on Instagram that like picks a photo a day from their hashtag that they feature on their site. And, you know, it just shows that you're a really established, accomplished photographer. It's like winning the award for the day, right? So, for example, gallery of light feature or a magic of childhood um, or light inspired the, or the bloom forum. Those are all enchanted childhood. Those are all feature hashtags. And if you use those hashtags, then other photographers are going to be seeing your work. Okay. But other photographers are not your audience. Local moms are your audience. So while you're getting all these comments and you're getting, you know, some followers that are photographers on Instagram, it doesn't matter. That's just vanity stuff. You really, it doesn't matter if someone's commenting on your photo for your business uh, unless they're, you know, in your ID. I mean, it's great that people comment on your photo anyway, but it's really important if, if they're, in your target market, so a local mom, right? Local moms are your audience on Instagram. Don't forget that, unless you're the type of photographer, and there are plenty out there that I'm, that I'm friends with, and I love their work, it's incredible. But these photographers do not run portrait photography businesses. They are just artists. A lot of them are moms, and this is their hobby. Like, not just hobby, but Obviously, they're incredibly talented. I don't want to like undermine it in any way. They're focused on the artistic part and not on the business part. That's my point. And so that's why they're getting features every day. And, um, and they're really up to date with those type of things. That's not important to us because we're focused on marketing our mini sessions and we're not marketing them to photographers across the country, right? We're, <laughs> we're marketing them to local moms. So please don't make that mistake. And I'm going to give you a lot of great tips to get those moms to your feed. So long-term strategy versus marketing your offer. So I'm going to touch in lightly on long-term strategy so that you know what to be um, doing and working on in the long term. But as far as marketing your mini ses sessions, it's a very specific short-term strategy on Instagram. And I want to spend more time on that. 
Uh, but if you do want to like master your Instagram and, you know, have Instagram always bring clients to you, new clients to you, that's what Instagram is amazing at. So really do delve into the long-term strategy of Instagram. In my one-on-one -on -one program and my group program, both are only three months. And like I walk you step by step, I hold your hand in building all of these things, like really going into your Instagram like for three hours, really looking at it and doing an audit of it so that you know exactly how to spend your time on it. Because I know Instagram can be a big time waster. I also have some cheat, uh, cheat sheets I'll throw into the group for you that'll really help. <coughs> okay, so um, I want to spend a little more time on marketing your offer. But I'll touch, I'll touch in on the marketing stuff here too. Okay, so this is long-term strategy. First of all, ignore this picture that I used for this slide. It's really old. And one thing I do love about it is that it, this is where my username come, came from. So, you know, it works better if you have the word photography in your username because then people know who you are. And I used to be at Stacy Potter Photography, but I felt like that was so boring and it just didn't feel like me. And I wanted to do more than just local photography at the time. This was like seven years ago or whenever. Um, so I looked at my profile and it's like co-creator of three sweet, bright beings. And I love that. And so now I'm at sweet, bright beings. Okay. So um, ignore this caption. It's not completely right. I've changed it a lot since then. Um, but I have some examples right here. So if you want to make sure your profile caption is correct, because that's really important. So um, you want to make sure your location is in your profile. Here's just a, um, four examples if you want to screenshot these. You want to make sure you have a call to action at the end, like, like now booking with an arrow down. You want to use emojis. You want to have a hashtag. Like I have a hashtag Stacy Potter Photography that has almost... A thousand, maybe it has over a thousand posts now. So it's like a hashtag. It's a real hashtag. Um, but I also, I switch around my other hashtag in my profile. Sometimes I have mom tags. Sometimes I have click and moms. Oh, but that's because you guys have to keep in mind, do not use my Instagram as an example for yours because 75% of my followers are photographers because I'm a photography business coach. <laughs> so that is my target audience. 25% of my audience are local moms. So what ends up happening is, you know, I do Instagram really well. And so Instagram sends me an uneven amount of photography students in Colorado. But that's fine because then I can see them in real life too. And I've met a few of you in real life. Okay. So in your profile caption, you know, you want to have your link. I've seen some people without links. Definitely have your location and tag your location in every single post. Don't tag the same location in every post or else Instagram's going to think you're spamming. But within your town, there's a million different locations. So, you know, just tag different places. Uh, and then make sure that it says that you're a photographer. And then here, I think this last one is the best example. Oh, hi, family photographer. And then she's classified as a photographer. And then she says a little bit about her and her photography fee. And then she says now booking and has a link. So um, she doesn't have a hashtag. Does she? No. So definitely put in a hashtag and um, that's going to help you. You could do like hashtag Boulder family photographer if you don't have a hashtag for yourself. Okay. So. Uh, captions within your post, what I do is, well, what I see is, okay, this is what I realized is that so many women hide behind dot, dot, dot. So they'll put like a meaningful quote for the first two lines, because that's all people see when they're scrolling or something lame, like how cute is this family or what a sweet session, you know, like something really just not unique at all, not personal. Who's going to read that caption, right? Because you think that only like your nearest and dearest are going to click on it to see if you wrote anything else or, and then there's this dot, dot, dot. And then you write this personal stuff or you write more. So it's just something that I see happening. I used to do it too. I realized that I was doing it and I made myself stop. And so now what I do is I write my caption and then I find the juiciest 
sentence and I put it at the top, like the, the sentence that is most likely to hook people in. And if there's not a sentence like that, then I create one. So um, instead of what a cute session, you could be like, um, it's hard to think of something off the top of my head without a photo. Um, let me get, bring up a photo so I can, okay, here. So how about for these pictures, if I posted them, then I would say, um, maybe at the beginning I would say, I've, I guess I would say, can you see, like, can you spot the really cute mistake made by one of the little girls in, in these pictures? So that would bring people in, right? And can you spot it? I just happen to see that the little girl has her butterfly wings on um, upside down. And I think that's just so sweet. So then you could write about something about, you know, the sweetness of letting kids just be themselves at a session and how magical those photos can turn out, even when everything isn't totally perfect. Because so many moms are perfectionists. Okay, so make your captions interesting and bring them in and you can be adding value in your captions, telling them about what to wear and um, you know what a mini what to expect at a mini session, what the difference between mini session and a full session is, you know, to create to, to make it feel special, to create FOMO. Okay, so let's talk about hashtags. So in general, I see a lot of you reusing the same hashtags over and over again. Make sure you're mixing them up or else Instagram's going to mark you as spam. And then start using hashtags more relevant to your local area. So instead of using, like I said, those photography hashtags like hashtag Boulder Family Photographer, hashtag Denver Family Photography, instead of using ones like that, uh, use the ones that you're your ideal clients are using, like, what are they hashtagging? Like hashtag Boulder mama. Yeah. Hashtag, uh, Boulder hairstylist. Sure. <laughs> hashtag, um, you know, children's museum of Lafayette or whatever it is. So you can be going to those hashtags and authentically commenting on these posts, you know, really read the caption. Don't be spammy. Just like with the Facebook groups, this is marketing to the group that you're part of, going to the hashtags. So you want to make sure that you're really have some, you don't comment unless you really have something to say, right? Don't just be that person that's like, beautiful photo, smiley face. Say something more meaningful. Okay. Um, and then there's like this white rabbit like going down the white rabbit hole of Instagram, it's genius. So what you do is you find a local client that is your ideal client and you comment on their first post. And then you find somebody else that has commented on their on that post that is also your ideal client and you comment on their first post. And then you find somebody that's commented on their first post <laughs> that is also, you know, it, a local mom, and then you go comment on their post. And this is going to eventually show Instagram that you are a part of this network of moms, and it's going to start referring them to you constantly. Like your name is going to be popping up constantly to them. So I have a cheat sheet. I'll post it to the group. Okay. Uh, everybody knows Instagram's pushing reels really hard right now. For some reason, I'm getting paid to make reels. Is anybody else? I don't know if it is because I, I have a little bit bigger following. It's not even a huge following. But um, yeah, they just paid me like $10 for my last reel. <laughs> don't know why. Okay, so be working on reels. There's so much fun you can have with them. You don't necessarily have to be jumping in front of the camera, pointing at things that don't exist or, you know, singing along. If that's your jam, do that. That's fun and clients love that. But you could also, um, you know, make sure you're getting behind the scenes. You could go location scouting and do a reel on location scouting. So just, you know, repurposing old videos. I just am constantly doing that. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know, I'm just constantly posting videos of me shooting because I know that that's interesting. I love seeing other people shooting, even if it's for five seconds on a story like makes me happy. Okay. So, um, for your clients, you know, and they're going to want to see the family more and the, you know, just the feeling of the family. So really bring that alive to them for them. And you can do that through reels. Okay. Your overall grid aesthetic should 
flow. It should be beautiful. Instagram is our platform, people. We're photographers. So not only does each individual photo have to be beautiful, but the photos as a whole should flow compositionally with color. Um, so think about all the different elements. And there's apps you can use like Plan OV or Preview. And those are free. And they let you arrange your grid, your feed grid, before committing to it. And then and then you figure it out and then you go post it on Instagram. So it's really helpful. Uh, if I ever, <laughs> I don't know who else is like this, but uh, like if I post a picture that doesn't fit, it really bugs me until I push it down f far enough in my grid, I don't see it anymore. That's a little bit of the perfectionist in me. Okay. Now, Instagram stories, those are where your people are. So really, like those are your people that are already your people. Um, and it's also your opportunity when, when like, so let's say you're going to, to local hashtags and you're hurting and commenting, those people are going to click on your profile and they're going to look at it. And a lot of people will also look at your stories. So just make sure you have content in your stories always. Make sure that that little bubble is always highlighted. Um, and I'm going to talk more about a lot more about stories next. And then, you know, the next thing is DMs. But whenever somebody slides into your DMs, it's just a great opportunity to develop that personal relationship. So again, you know, no need to go into specifics. It's more about um, just getting to know somebody. And you never want to cold sell anybody. And um, yeah, like just don't go into somebody, don't cold DM somebody and say, hey, did you see my mini session offer? It's perfect for you. Instead, wait for them to comment on one of your photos or posts and then be like, hey, I, and then you could be like, hey, I saw that you've been really interested in these mini sessions. You've been voting on my polls or whatever. You know, I, I'd, I'd love to send you, um, or, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to book you before other people, before I make it public or something like that. I do reach out to my favorite client, not my favorite clients, but my past clients that I know want to book before I announce, because I want them to know that they're special and that they get the first chance. Um, and then they're much more likely to book. And then I also reach out to anybody that has shown interest over the year, year, but didn't book for whatever reason. I reach out to them personally as well and say, hey, for whatever reason, you didn't get to do that shoot here's a great opportunity. I just wanted to make sure you got in on it before I announced it publicly. So whenever you get an opportunity to say that, <laughs> like I just want you to have the opportunity to book before I announce publicly, that's going to create FOMO and you should say it. Okay. So we want to be always building excitement, then touching in on the pain and offering your photography, your mini session as the solution. So that's lesson one and two. If you guys, the whole marketing is based on that and mindset is so important. So if you don't feel like you totally understand that, go back and listen to lesson one and two. Because that's what we're going to do in our seven days of Instagram marketing for our mini sessions. And that's really all it takes is seven days. So we've been warming up our clients with, you know, value material and getting to know me material. So now we're going in, okay? So this isn't exactly day to day. I just kind of like plotted out the flow, but you can do any of these in any order as long as you understand like this process, okay? You're gonna do this process on a micro level day to day, and you're gonna do it on a mic macro level over the course of the week. So for example, on day one, you wanna be hinting at your offer like some something amazing is going to come or, Hey, do you guys remember what offer I did last year around this time? Or you could start doing market research in your stories. Instagram loves polls in stories. So you could do this or that. Um, like, would you rather have a full session or a mini session? Would you rather have candid or posed? Would you rather be formal or informal and do polls and, uh, Instagram is going to show your stories to way more people because uh, polls just, you know, Instagram pushes it to more people and you're going to start seeing who's interested, right? And start building excitement, start getting people dreaming about, you know, what if that this was them? What if they booked a session? What would it be like for their family? So you're building excitement, right? Now, maybe we're on day two and we're hitting all the areas. Um, 
posts, reels, stories. So maybe one day you do a post and then the next two days you do reels because reels are just doing so much more about so, so much better right now than posts. Um, but you always want to constantly be in, be in stories. So, you know, story ideas are, you know, go scout your location, take video, go at golden hour. You can do, um, last year I did a location story where I said, do you want to do photos at NCAR or Wonderland Lake? And then that gave me an opportunity to showcase my portfolio in my stories. So first I showed all the photos from NCAR, like my favorite ones. And then I showed a bunch of beautiful ones from Wonderland Lake. And in the end, I decided to have, and I already knew this anyway, but I decided I had sessions. I had a mini session date at both places. So remember that stories and these this or that stories or any type of stories that you're doing are opportunities to showcase your portfolio. So constantly be repurposing old content. It's okay to post old photos. You want to bring the emotion alive, bring your photography, you know, bring all that emotion to your audience so that they're just completely immersed in it all week. Um, right. So now you're evoking the emotional pain point. Talking about golden hour, like I said, is, is an amazing one. I feel like there's just a lot of magic and dreaminess that can come from that. Or, uh, you know, talking about your theme, talking about me, um, just getting, yeah, like Katie's reel where she, you know, is talking about the fleetingness of childhood. And as she's talking about that, there's pictures of mom and baby connecting. It's just so beautiful. And the song matched and the reel was just perfect. So things like that. Okay. And then, you know, pointing to also the fun stuff like clothing, you could do this or that for clothing in your stories, um, like anthropology or Ann Taylor, urban outfitter and have, you know, pictures and have them do a poll. Or you can just have a story where you have examples of different um, photos like families that you've loved what they've worn to your shoots. So you are displaying their photos and your stories where you do a post where, you know, you post different, you do a carousel of different photos that you absolutely loved what they wore. And then you can also put some lay flats in there. So just Google lay flat, lay flat photography, family spring outfits and play around with those <laughs> search terms and you'll find some good lay flats that you can use. And put those in your stories, you know, ones that match your branding and match your style um, and try to get people involved in the stories. People love clothing. It's the number one thing that they search for around family photos. So it's always important to do whatever platform you're on. If it's a blog post that you're writing about what to wear or you're doing a story, like in my stories today, I put that little video screenshot of my style guide, like just having little sneak peeks like that set to music. All of that is really, is really beautiful. Okay. So pointing out value, you could do a story on, uh, different print products that you offer. So canvas versus wooden print, um, album versus, uh, you know, standout mount. I don't know. There's so many different options, so many amazing things that my, my printer offers. So it's really easy to also put like wall display ideas into your stories, you know, just Google wall display ideas for photographers and find some that you're able to use and that match your style too and match your branding. So, um, you know, pe and then get people dreaming, like, don't be like, oh, this is what I love. You're going to be like, what would you want? Like, you know, at the end of your story about the wall displays, like what room, like imagine what room would you do? Tell me which room would you want to put these photos up in? And that makes them for a second imagine what their photos would look like and imagine what they would look like up on their wall, like making their house a million times better. So those little things are really going to bring the session alive to your audience and make them so much more excited for when your booking day opens, okay? 
And you're going to feel so much better doing all of this stuff because it's not just putting out one post and then seeing if, and then waiting and being nervous and seeing like feeling like, Oh, am I going to be a failure? Is nobody going to book? Instead, you know that you're putting out lots of value, lots of content. You're making connections with people across Instagram. And no matter what, you know that this is going to propel your business forward in some way. So just like, put everything you have into it. If you are on Instagram, I cannot tell you, once you master it, clients just, Instagram just keeps sending you clients. It's like a client machine. And same thing for ads and ads are so cheap. So um, if you really understand, not who really understands the algorithm, but if you kind of understand the algorithm, then you understand why this works, okay? Um, Let's see what else. Okay, so you've pointed out the value. The solution is your mini sessions. So, you know, now you're going to start hinting, not hinting, but you're going to say that tomorrow slots open. Uh, So be ready. Maybe think about what your first, your top three times are so that you can get that best, you know, golden hour spot for your family. Uh, You know, be reaching out to people not publicly, you know, like I said before, people that you want to, um, feel special people that you want to to book (laughs) if you want someone to book reach out to them before you open it publicly but you know after you've given enough value and and pulled them in okay um or at least put up enough value so that if they haven't even seen that you've been doing all this they can go and look and be like oh yeah I see okay I see what she's talking about I see that real I see why I need to book a mini session And then on the last day, you're going to present your offer. And remember what, I guess I never talked about how to um, choose your profile picture for your profile, but it's the same with marketing, okay? So for your profile pic and for your marketing pic, you want to pick something that, a photo that is either one of the following, a face looking directly at the camera, because people really engage with that and they'll stop the scroll or something with a big splash of red, like my profile picture, that dress is just very contrasty with the yellow. And then the last thing is something very contrasty. So that's gonna really show, it's just gonna pop out more for them. Oh, and then an interesting fact is um, in photography photography competitions, um, photos with a splash of red like that win hands down more than any other type of photo. I just thought that was so interesting. Okay, so when you do your actual flyer, quote unquote, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate um, or fancy. It doesn't have, Instagram favors one photo for ads with less text. So you could just do, like I think carousel, carousel ads are perfect for mini sessions and Instagram really loves carousel ads and will push them more. So maybe have a beautiful picture first with mini sessions written over it, spring mini sessions 2022 something like that, whatever you want. And a beautiful font is the first picture. And then do a carousel. The next one is just, you know, information with the dates and times and what's offered. And then the next picture, and the ne- next one is a beautiful picture. And then the next carousel is another thing with information. You know, so really get creative with this. And I'm going to post some examples, a ton of examples into the group so you guys can start dreaming up what that final ad is going to look like. Um, okay. So, and then on that day in that caption, you know, you're going to post it to your feed. You're going to post it to your stories. When you post it to your stories, make sure you put up a question bubble so people can, and then put something like, um, drop your email for more information. Just don't make it too hard for them, right? To, to write something, writing their emails are very hard and it's always important to collect emails anyway. Um, And then in your feed post, you're going to post your offer. Sorry about that, guys. Um, You're going to post your offer and in the caption, you know, you're going to build up that FOMO, still build up the emotion um, and list out the times there too as well. Okay, so then, uh, you know, you're going to get a bunch of bookings that day. It's just going to happen, Um, especially if you are combining it with another offer or like another platform like um having all your friends post 
their fi their pictures. Those five friends post their pictures on Facebook that day, the same day that you open your bookings, or you send out your newsletter the same day you open your bookings. Um, so you want to pair your Instagram announcement with another platform just to, you know, cover your bases, just to do more. Uh, okay. So after this first day, it's not just, you know, that's it, it's over, goodbye. <laughs> no, it's more, um, after that, it's more just about nurturing the audience. So, you know, reminding them periodically, but not spamming them for the next week about your mini sessions. Um, so look at what I'm doing with the group. Like I'm putting in little, t like little hints and tastes of what we're doing in the group and my stories, um, like little audio bits or, you know, whatever. But I'm not constantly saying, join the group, join the group, join the group, or I hope I'm not. Um, instead, you know, I'm saying that like once every six slides or one every 10 slides, I'll put up a little box that says DM me if you want to join the group. It's not too late, you know? Um, so that's what you want to be doing is in that second week, still bringing in those people, still addressing any hesitations, any objections people have, and, um, and just, you know, gently reminding them that there are still openings. Um, and then, you know, start, starting to mark off. I've seen a lot of photographers put up like a list of their times and their stories. And then every day they'll just mark off a couple more that have been filled. So you can do that whether you've, you know, filled a couple or not. Just mark out a couple to make it look like things are moving along, right? We're, we're trying to develop FOMO. Um, and yeah, I think that just this whole week is about continuing to build that excitement based on the clients that have already booked, right? So now we're bringing in, um, hey, look, this amazing Pinterest board that I just made with a client. Like if the client says it's okay to post, which they'll always say yes, and then post their their Pinterest, a Pinterest board you started making with one of your mini session clients and talk about it, you know, and say like, this is what I am going to be doing with you too. If you book a mini session, we're going to, we're not just going to like insert your child into a background and that's going to be it. I'm going to work with you ahead of time so that these are your dream photos, you know? So just doing more and more to bring that experience alive, whatever the client experience you bring to your clients, bring that alive to your potential audience after you've opened your sessions and you'll continue booking them on Instagram. Okay. So some other ideas for Instagram, collaborate with other local businesses to promote your mini sessions. For example, um, in the fall, I think Mile High Mamas, I can't remember who they were. Don't steal them from me. <laughs> but they reached out to me and said that they wanted to advertise my mini sessions for me. So I never got around to letting them do it. But um, I'm going to do that this year. I'm going to send it to all the local, you know, Instagram feeds that local moms in my area follow for information about local things. So like Little Rad Adventure is one of my friends. And they do all these cute reels and stories about local hiking destinations near Denver. So they're like a perfect feed to, you know, to advertise my mini sessions. And when you approach them, you know, just say, you know, I would love to collaborate with you. Would you mind posting about my mini sessions? And then later down the line, um, I'd be happy to help you promote something or repost something for you. You know, look at their feed and make sure you feel like you can offer them something little like that. Don't overpromise them. It's not a huge thing. But the more people you get on board doing this, the more people are going to be seeing your, your ad. And be sure to use the same ad over and over again so that they're like, oh, it's that one again. Oh, it's that one again. Oh, that one's trustworthy because I've seen it this many times. They say it takes someone seven times of seeing your brand to be able to trust you enough to buy from you. I wish someone had told me that with my first business, which was a baby sling manufacturing business. We sold baby slings all over the world. And I didn't know this. I was really young in my 20s. And I spent $14,000 on an ad for Parent and Child magazine. It's like a real magazine. This was like, 20, I don't know, 17 years ago. And I could only afford 
like one ad and it did nothing. <laughs> it was $14,000. And then I learned like you have to have your ad in that magazine in every magazine, you know, that's how you make it work. So um, people have to just see it over and over again to be able to trust you. They're not going to just see one ad in a magazine and then you're going to get $14,000 worth of orders. No. <laughs> um, so similarly, we'll go over some of those, um, some of those methods like connecting with different other businesses in your area. We'll go over next time and some other marketing strategies. I could go on and on about Instagram, but this is getting very long. DM me your questions or ask them inside the group so everybody can benefit from the answers. Okay, so for homework, I want you to start planning out your calendar. Um, if you are doing something on Instagram, plan out your seven-day calendar. Think about exactly what reels you're going to make, what posts you're going to post, what stories you're going to do. You're going to talk about location, props. You're going to talk about what to wear. Plan all of that out. If it's not on Instagram, plan out where you're going to do it, your newsletter, your blog, um, however you're going to do it. Facebook. Okay. So start planning out that calendar because you really want to have a lot of that content made before going into your week of marketing because you want to have time to develop personal relationships and you want to have time to connect with people in the hashtags, right? And then in the DMs or wherever it ends up working. So your second homework assignment is make sure you have your location scouted, scouted at golden hours so you get beautiful video and take some photos so that you have lots of content to use for your stories and reels. You can make some reels too. Okay, and then your third homework assignment is three adjectives to describe the overall feeling of the entire marketing campaign. So what is the feeling? It's, it's your branding infused with the excitement of whatever this mini session offer is. So for me, it would be like, like joy, connection, fresh. Like that's what comes to mind because it's spring mini sessions and like there's just this for me, the sense of renewal this year, right? So I don't know what it is for you, but I'm going to infuse those three adjectives into everything I do. So everything I do, I want it to say joy. I want it to say connection and I want it to have a feeling of freshness. So go look at my stories right now and tell me, what do you feel? Okay. So I can't wait to feel that in your marketing too. And let's talk more about this in the group. Thanks guys. Can't wait to see all the mini session magic you start making.